The world's strongest man finals are returning to Malta for the first time since 1999. This is an island that boasts thousands of years of history and numerous heritage sites. But before our athletes can come here to do battle, there's one final round of qualifying to be negotiated in the powerhouse of strongman, Poland. And it takes place in the shadow of one of Europe's most impressive medieval structures, Malbork Castle. This is the last chance for the top three here to guarantee themselves a place at the World's Strongest Man Finals. Previously, the tour went to Connecticut, USA at the Mohegan Sun, where the records fell. Winning the contest was Derek Poundstone in his home state. In second place was Travis Ortmeyer from Texas. And finishing a full US sweep was Brian Shaw in third. But perhaps the highlight of the show was Derek Poundstone's world record in the Apollon's Axle. The tour then moved on to Stavanger in Norway, the ancestral home of the Vikings. And Norway's strongest man didn't disappoint, taking second place. The great Russian Misha Kuklaev came in third. And the USA's Travis Ortmeyer ended up on top. So far then, Poundstone, Ortmeyer, Shaw, Skog, Kukliev and Marius Pudzianowski, by virtue of being the returning champion from last year, have all qualified so far. To find out which three join them from Poland, let's head over to our commentary team of Paul Dickinson and Colin Bryce. Thanks very much indeed, Martin. Well, it's a scorching day here, 35 degrees, right in the centre of Malbork. The crowd are certainly enjoying watching our strong men arrive here in style. First of all, Kevin Nee of the United States, four times the world's strongest man competitor. Valens Gulbis of Latvia, second in the Latvian Championships this year. Kostiantin Ilin of the Ukraine, Ukraine's strongest man, a real tough competitor. Lauren Charlie comes from Gloucester, he's one of England's strongest men. Damian Antoniuk of Poland, Polish powerlifting champion. Mark Felix of England, once again trying to go to the world's strongest man finals. Tamo Mit of Estonia, twice Estonia's strongest man. Darren Sadler of England, a gritty Yorkshireman who always gives of his best. Slavomir Lukavsky of Poland, the Polish amateur strongman champion. Stefan Solvi Peterson of Iceland, twice Iceland's strongest man. Rob Frampton of England, fifth at England's strongest man competition this year. Jarek Dimmick of Poland competing on home territory, Europe's strongest man in 2005. And certainly Dimmick, in front of his home crowd, will be feeling very confident indeed. And to take us through the first event, it's over to Colin Bryce. Our first event here is the medley, and you start with this 390 kilogram super yoke. Lifting is hard enough, but you then have to run 15 meters. Then run back, pick up these 175 kilo farmer's walk in each hand and run 15 meters again. So look back at some of the earlier competitors. Damian Antonio of Poland, he got off to a cracking start just over 30 seconds. Lukaski of Poland, 31.31 for second place at the moment. Then Gulbus a shade slower at 33.91. Rob Frampton of England, quite slow for him, 38.20. Well, here we go. Kostiantin Ilin of Ukraine, Ukraine's strongest man. And he's up against Lawrence Charlie of England. Real gritty competitor. Away we go. Well, some cracking times have been set so far. Just over 30 seconds, the lead time at the moment. Oh, my goodness. And back we go. These guys can really sprint for big fellas, can't they? Oh, phenomenal. Both men uh, over 20 stones in body weight, but Charlet's got the pick up quicker. He's charging for that second line, and I think he'll take the win. Yes, he does. 23.78. Cracking run there from Lawrence. And Ill in there, he finishes 29.79, both under 30 seconds. Well, next up, it's Tamo Mid of Estonia. And he's up against Darren Sadler of England. 
Not a particularly big competitor in terms of bulk, but so athletic is Darren Sadler. Well, if you look at the height difference, Sadler just under 5'10", Tom Omit nearly 6'6". Huge man, but that doesn't help in this kind of event. Look at Sadler keeping with him stride for stride. In fact, he's ahead. And you know, you're right. Sadler is always there or thereabouts. He's the all-round package. Well, he's almost like a decathlete sort of build as opposed to a shot putter or a discus thrower. And Sadler just showing how quickly he can move as well. It's going to be a quick time. 28.13 for Darren Sadler. Moves into second place. And Mitt just slowing up a little bit towards the end there. 35.83 for the Estonian. What a great start this is for Britain. Sadler and Charley first and second at the moment. The crowd absolutely bathed in sunshine. And now they're going to watch Iceland's strongest man, Peterson, up against Kevin Nee of the United States. We saw in the last program just how badly injured his right bicep was. Just wonder if he's managed to get over that yet, but away goes Kevin Nee. He really is running very well indeed. Well, it was a bullet start, wasn't it? Wasting no time in the pickup, straight onto the run, and they're back already. Remember, 175 kilos in each hand. Kevin Nee and Peterson are absolutely neck and neck here. It's going to be a very tight finish. Nee just gets it. Just a tenth of a second away from the lead. Everybody goes tumbling over. Peterson 24.18. Two cracking good times there. So it's high fives all around for those two guys. The kids playing in the sunshine here. And next up, it's Mark Felix up against Jarek Dimek. And Dimmick, of course, on home territory. I wonder what he's thinking now. Now I'm 38 old. It's not. I'm not so young for the competing, but uh, I'm, I've got a lot of experience. And I, in my opinion, it's uh, almost same important like uh, young and power in this sport. A lot of people thinking that only power we use. No, this is not true. We use a lot of our brain. No, it was not so good day for me, but today I prepare much more better because it's my country and in Norway somebody kicked my backside on my body and it was good for my preparing. I know what I need and I know what I want to show for everyone. And you have to watch this in TV. Uh, uh, I think that a lot of people thinking that Mariusz Pudzianowski is from the other planet. He's like uh, Robocop or something, but in this year he had injury, he broke the, one of the biceps, he had scores almost shaped like mine. And uh, we will see, we, we see that it's something bad. Maybe he show for everyone that he is the best, but we have to watch this, what's happening in the World's Strongest Contest. This town means a lot of me because it's my town, here I live my son, my wife, and of course I'm the king of this castle, and I have to be on the top of this contest. He certainly is a very big king of the castle. He's up against another big fella here, Mark Felix. And Felix has had mixed fortunes over the last few years, but remember, he has finished fourth in the World's Strongest Final in the past. Yarek Dimek, neck and neck with Mark Felix, but now Felix beginning to come away. And this is quick. There is Dimek trying his best. Felix gets it, 22.9. And that is the fastest time so far. What a superb finish there by Mark Felix. A pretty good time as well from Jarek Dimmick of Poland. The two older men of this competition, the two veterans doing well here, Paul. Yeah, that was a tremendous finish by Mark Felix and maximum points for him. So, Mark, your last chance to qualify for World's Strongest Man and you win the first event. How does it feel? It feels great. You know, once I get the first event out of the way, I'm happy. I'm looking forward to the rest of the event now. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. Come on! Lancashire's ever vocal Mark Felix and Gloucestershire's Lawrence Chardley come out on top in the first event. Yorkshireman Darren Sadler is down in sixth. It's a good start for the British. After the break, we move on to the car deadlift, an event Mark Felix is renowned for.
Welcome back to Malbork in Poland and the final Giants Live of the year. Right next to the largest medieval castle in the world, our strongest men in the world have to face up to the car deadlift. Weighing 320 kilos at the back, they have 75 seconds to lift it as many times as they can. Portsmouth's Rob Frampton managed an impressive six reps. Latvia's Roland Gulbis did just four. And Jarek Dimek's training partner Damian Antoniok did six. Compatriot Slavomir Lukowski equaled that. Stefan Solvi Peterson takes the lead on nine reps. Varshale came close with eight. Ukraine's strongest man, Konstantin Ilin, matched Peterson's nine reps. Let's join the action with Darren Sadler of England. Well, Darren Sadler, as you can see, he's got a slight disadvantage in terms of body weight. He only weighs 125 kilograms, but every one of those kilograms is packed full of solid muscle. Good competitor, Sadler, isn't he? Oh, fantastic. Twice now, world's strongest man. He's finished third in his heat, just missed making the finals. And I think he'll certainly be uh, a good bet for coming top three at this contest. I'd be amazed if he was outside the top six. He's always there or thereabouts. Look at this, squeezing up his seventh rep. He's hunting down nine reps here. And eight's good as well, so he could get it. I remember Colin, you know, he finished second at the World 105 Kilo Bodyweight Championship in China a few years ago. He really is a tough competitor. So nine, he goes ahead. He's in the lead. Darren Sadler of England and Yorkshire is leading at the moment. Just getting clarification on how much time is left. He's certainly got time for one or even more. Well, he's got 15 seconds still to go, and there goes 11. 12 would be something else. Even that would put the pressure on someone like Felix. No, I think he's done. <laughs> Absolutely exhausted. The lactic acid has set in, but Darren Sadler gets a very good score. Well, Jarek Dimek, we know what sort of pedigree he has. He's been around for a long, long time. Poland just keep on turning out these fantastic strongmen. And he started at a hell of a lick. So Dimek already on to four ticking away and we're still inside 20 seconds this is good going there's so much pride at stake here for Dimmick. 38 years old now as he said before and this is his hometown he's a real hero here you know it's not just the age it's the punishment that the body takes when you compete many many times all over the world and of course the training to go alongside it that's when it gets hard but Darren Sadler remember 11 repetitions Dimmick's on nine, but just blowing a little bit heavy now. Has he got anything left? That last rep really hurt. He's going to have to dig deep for another one. He's up to ten. One more to go to draw level. With Darren Sadler, and he gets it. I think that's pretty much going to be it. He's only got ten seconds left. And Yarek Dimmick, I think, has given up the ghost now. He's being urged on by the crowd. But a gutsy performance, and he ties for the lead. But he's so well liked in his hometown. Kevin Nee, a very familiar face to Strongman, and just 23 years old. Four World's Strongest Man competitions under his belt. And that's a lot of punishment on a young body. It certainly is. I mean, it's amazing. We've seen some tremendous young competitors throughout this year's qualifying competition. And listen to the crowd. Just helping him along a little bit. And going well. Six repetitions done. And the time is very good, too. If there was to be a tie in terms of the number of reps, the time would then become crucial. He's just reached a bit of a stumbling block now, and I'm not surprised, but nine repetitions looking good. Up goes number 10, and we saw this in Norway, despite his colossal single rep maximum in deadlift, and he's tremendous at that. He does tend to burn out. 
Can he get the 11th up? He's had a little break there. Yes, he does, and he's got 25 seconds. It's a 75-second clock. So he's got time to take the lead here. This for the lead, and he gets it. The judge says yes, and that is a very happy American we've got there. 12 repetitions. It could be big points. Well, Mark Felix, of course, got off to a cracking start in the first event. Weighs in at 140 kilos, but I tell you what, he doesn't look it. That is some lean muscle mass he's got there, isn't it? He's so tremendously well put together, and so much of it are in his lower back muscles. Very thick lower back, and a lot of people say he's the best deadlifter in the world, and he could well be proving it here. Eighth threat was as easy as the first pole. This is phenomenal stuff. Such rhythm, such precision, and closing in on that lead of these. One more to go, and then one for the outright lead, and again, maximum points for England. Yes, he's got it. That equals the lead, and he gets 13. Surely he must know he's got it. Maximum points for the second time in a row, just looking for a bit of clarification. And how about that? One more for luck. That's easy. Well, the crowd here have seen a rather understated performance by Mark Felix, but that was superb. I really think that has proven once again that Felix is the best deadlifter. And in fact, Mark Felix is certainly the best here over the course of the first two events. But here's confirmation of his victory. 14 repetitions ahead of Kevin Nee and Darren Sadler, tying with Yarek Dimmock. In terms of the overall situation, Felix there certainly in first place ahead of the American and Yarek Dimmock of Poland in third. So we're on to event three, and it's the tyre flip. You have to flip this 320-kilo tyre three times. If that wasn't hard enough, you then have to go on to this 400-kilo tyre, 880 pounds, and flip that another three times. After this event, we have a cut, and we'll be down to just six men. Pressure's on. Well, we can check on the progress of some of the early competitors. Tamo Mit of Estonia, 33.01 for him, good time. Roland Gulbis of Latvia, 48.28. That was some way off the pace. Damien Antoniuk of Poland, 29.95 to go into the lead. Then Lukowski, 28.69, another advance on the leading time. Ilin of the Ukraine, 33.12. But anybody who wanted to do anything in this competition had to go below 30 seconds. That's exactly what Darren Sadler did. Lauren Charlie of Great Britain, 31.97 for him. Off the pace a little bit. And Kevin Nee of the United States, a very disappointing 39.74. Well, Rob Frampton of England, really tough competitor here, but we've seen some fabulous times so far. And just a reminder, the lead at the moment, Lukowski of Poland, 28.69. And this, Colin, I think is one of the most brutal tyre flipping events I've ever seen. Well, <laughs> if the first tyre wasn't hard enough, the second one's even bigger. And the tread on these is quite difficult to get your fingers underneath, just to get an actual position on it to lift. The Portsmouth man, Portsmouth's strongest man, Rob Frampton, in his first international competition. It's a baptism of fire, but the Portsmouth man has done well so far. He's shown he can mix it with the big boys. He no doubt won't make the cut after this event, but uh, he certainly hasn't let himself down here, Paul. Well, he certainly hasn't, but this, again, an example of the overall fitness of these guys, but it's a very slow 48.41 for Rob Frampton. I think you'll be disappointed with that. Well, Sven Carlsen is watching very intently, just checking on a few points before the next competitor, Stefan Solvi peterson continuing the tradition of great Icelandic strongmen. Well, I'm 23 years old, and uh, many people think that quite young I guess guess so but uh, I don't don't really think about it much you don't get extra points for being young it's all about being strong and I, I think I'm pretty strong well I guess guess I am because I'm here so uh, I'm just happy to be here and uh, looking forward to the future I have big goals 
So Norway was my first Giants live show, and I did pretty good. I was close to the podium, so almost guaranteed the spot at the World's Strongest Man. So I'm kind of hoping to, to do it here today in Poland. Really happy to be here in Poland for the first time. Land of uh, great champions, to say the least. And just uh, looks like a beautiful day. I gotta say the stones are my favorite event because I usually do pretty good at them. So I just just hoping to make the cut. It's a it's a really strong competition, so I can so I can go for the stones and try to get them in there. We'll see. Today you will see Icelandic Viking power. I've heard that somewhere before. Tell you what, Colin, if you're well, Iceland's strongest man, there's a very good chance you are going to be one of the strongest men in the world. Well, for an island, uh, just over 300,000 people, they've churned out so many powerful, great men. John Paul Sigmundsson, Magnus Bear Magnusson, and now this guy, Stefan Solvi Peterson. It looks like a good time. He will go under your magic 30 seconds, Paul. He's certainly going to go under it with some ease. That is a magnificent time by Peterson, 27.01. That is going to be hard to beat. Great flip up there and just cruises through. Brilliant. Well, Jarek Dimmock, what can he do? We saw what a magnificent time Peterson set, but Dimmock certainly is going to have the crowd on his side. So expect some fireworks. Well, believe it or not, this man is a former gymnast as a young man. Stuck on a bit of beef since then, but it just tells you how explosive he is. He comes off the ground so fast here. It's just one movement, kicks it with a knee, bang, it's over. I think because he's a little bit shorter than Peterson, his levers are working well here. And that is the fastest time we've seen, 25.06. Oh, my word. A bit of glory for the local man. That was absolutely superb, almost kicking it over there. And he'll look back on this moment and he will thoroughly enjoy what he's seen. Well, it's Mark Felix next. The overall leader, of course, Kevin Nee of the United States. He was disappointing at 39.74. I don't know what happened to him, but Mark Felix really has a tremendous time to try and beat. 25.06 by Yarek Dimmock. Do you think Felix can beat that? Well, he gave so much in the deadlift, I just wonder how tired his back is. And of course, so much of it is, are you lucky with your grip when you reach down there? So far, so good. It'll be tight. It's going to be tight. He's got one more rotation to go. He's outside of the time, so Dimmock's got maximum points. And that is another good performance by Mark Felix, but it spoils his 100% record so far in the competition. Absolutely exhausted after that. He gave it his all there, Felix. 29.55 seconds. Gets some decent points, but there's a few men ahead of him. Jarek Dimek takes his first win, two seconds ahead of the Icelander in second. Importantly, Laurent Charlet took seventh, and that gives him enough points to stay in the top six and make the cut for the final three events. Jarek Dimek has jumped up the order to second, with Mark Felix still commanding this show at the top. After the break, we move on to the oldest of all the strongman disciplines, stone lifting. Another Mark Felix favorite. Welcome back to Malbork in Poland, where the strongest men in the world are competing on what is a blisteringly hot day. Currently, Mark Felix of England is leading the show with just three events to go. On to event four, and it's the Atlas Stones. Now, these stones weigh from 130 kilos all the way up to 175 kilos. Five stones in total, and they have to be lifted onto this platform. Now, we've had the cut, we're down to six men, and Lawrence, you just made it by the skin of your teeth. You must be pleased to get through, though. Yeah, I'm very happy to be in the top six. Um, had a bit of an injury on the first event, which has made things difficult, so I'm just trying to take one event at a time at the moment, try and block out the pain, and just try and place as high as I can today, try and get my place at World's Strongest Man. How about these stones? Can you do all five? On a good day, definitely, but um, it's going to be painful, so I'm going I'm to try. That's, that's what I'm going to say, you know? I'm, I'm not here to whine about things. I'm here to do my best, so... All right, good luck.
I'm, I'm feeling good at the moment. I've been training hard. I've had some good results um, nationally this year. I won the UK, England's strongest man, so I'm feeling confident. Uh, it's, it's really exciting being able to compete against the best guys in the world, guys that you watched on telly when you are younger. But um, last year was my first year competing internationally, and I'm over the kind of stage of, wow, these are my idol kind of people. These, these people I'm, I'm competing against now are just competitors. I'm there to beat them. I'm, I'm sure they want to try and beat me, but they're going to have to work hard to do it. Over the last few years, probably since um, well, probably Ollie Thompson and uh, Mark Felix came on the scene, they kind of stepped up the ladder a little bit and gave all the new guys like myself, Jimmy Marku, Terry Hollands, uh, something higher to aim for, I suppose. And now you've got probably five or six really good guys in this country all pushing each other. We come down and train with each other. I'm down at um, Dave Beatty, Bulldogs gym today. Jimmy Marku trains here. Um, and we, we try and um, train with each other and push each other harder each week. I think hopefully this year we can see some good guys do well at Worlds, hopefully. When you meet a lot of these top strong men, they are incredibly strong guys, and they'd be at any strength sport, they'd, they'd excel at. Uh, Lawrence is, is quite young, although he may not look it, and he, he's very, very gifted. Um, he, he squatted today for the first time using bands, and he found it an awkward thing to get used to, but he was very, he's very explosive, and he, he listens to what you tell him, and I think he can see how the actual technique will help him if he can develop it over a few months. Right, obviously World's Strongest Man is the top competition of the year, and that's what all of us are trying to strive for. Um, so if I, if I can achieve that today um, in Poland, I think, you know, it'll give me a good chance to try and prove where I am on the world ranking kind of base, and hopefully put a good performance in. Well, a good performance is exactly what Lawrence Charlie is looking for here. This is such a hard event, though. Technical, strength-wise, power-wise, and everything else. Already a mistake there, Paul. You're right. He didn't get his arms all the way underneath, and it just slipped out. You see, he's just patting his hands there. He's got the tacky glue, the resin on his hands to try and help stick to the ball. Two stones to go, and they're getting heavier and heavier now. It certainly helps if you've got long arms and Lawrence Charlie there just struggling a wee bit. My goodness, maybe a touch of cramp in his calf muscle there and that is not good. But the temperature is very hot here. These guys are losing a lot of fluid. And he's trying to stretch off. This is costing time. And I really think you're going to have to do all five stones. I know they're heavy, but we've got some great stone lifters in Dimmick, Knee, Sadler, and Felix, of course, still to come. So this is not going to be a great time for Lawrence Charlet, even if he gets these up, which I don't think he is. Well, there you have it. Three stones in 22.94. And Lawrence Charlet, certainly glad to be here, that's for sure. Well, it's just slipping out of his grip. Probably sweat is a bit of a problem here, Paul. Well, Kevin Knee of the United States. Again, this is an event which could affect his injured right bicep, which we saw earlier in the series. He's away to a cracking start. This is a real powerful start from the American. Up goes number four. And here's five, Paul. This is going to be a great time. That is phenomenal. 17.76 seconds. I know we've got some strong men here, but that is going to be very hard to beat indeed. What a surprise. Darren Sadler now. He knows this event particularly well. It's a great favourite in the whole of the United Kingdom. He must have done this on many, many occasions. And Sadler, he'll be loving the fact that these platforms are lower than normal. Sometimes, like at World's Strongest Man, they're up over six foot, which doesn't help for someone who's only 5'10". Here goes the fourth. Well, is he going to beat me? I don't think he is, but five looks good. It's certainly looking good for five for Darren. If he can just get this one, he's got it. Five stones in 23.30, and that could be good points for the Yorkshireman. Well, a very knowledgeable crowd here in Poland, and they're appreciating that. Stefan Solvi Peterson is up next. And I guess, like all British strongmen, 
in Iceland. This really is considered to be a fantastic test of strength. Look how easy that first one was. But let's just remind ourselves that the leader, Kevin Nee of the USA, five stones in a phenomenal 17.76. Peterson's going to be close. Oh, it is going to be close. He's just outside the time. 19.5, but I think that's going to be good points for the Icelander. He's just Pip Sadler as well. Look at that last one. He's so tall, it was easy for him. Jarek Dimmick now. And goodness only knows how many times uh, this guy has competed in this particular competition in the Atlas Stones. And that is a quick start once again. He's not hanging around, is he? He's off the back of a win in the tyre flip. Here goes number four. It's going to be very quick. This is absolutely phenomenal. He's got to be inside it, surely. Yes, he is. 16.92. We have a new leader. And it's the homeboy, Jarek Dimmock. Well, he just lifts them in one movement. He didn't waste any time around the knees. And that leaves us with just Mark Felix to go. The Englishman, who's in the lead overall. And we know he blows hot and cold at this event. Sometimes he's unbelievable, but he's so prone to mistakes. I tell you what, he almost dunked that big stone on the first one. This is quick. He's chasing Dimmock's time of 16.92. One to go. This could be super fast. It is. It's victory for England. 15.84 seconds. That is victory number three for Mark Felix. Wow. The Englishman on fine form there. And that'll be good points for the overall. So, Kevin, something looked like it was wrong in the tire flip. What happened? Uh, nothing's wrong. I'm just, I've been a little sick. No excuses, though. This is my, this was my contest to blow, and I blew it. I can't blame it on anything but myself. So, uh, you know, I've got third in the stones. Hopefully that does something and put myself in position to get top three to go to Worlds. But I really blew this one. I got no one to blame but myself. Mark Felix takes the win, doing all five stones in a very impressive 15.84 seconds. Some disappointment, though, for Darren Sadler. He did all five, but came fifth on time. Overall, then, Felix leads by two and a half points over Dimek, with a big fight brewing for that third place position. After the break, we have a test of shoulder power when the men have to press a quad bike over their head. Welcome back to Malbork Castle, where a storm is brewing to capture the final three qualifying places. Sven Viking Carlsen will oversee the next event, the Viking Press, where an authentic Viking quad bike will be repped as many times as possible in 75 seconds. Laurent Chalet managed to lift the 145 kilo bike eight times. Stefan Solvi Pedersen managed nine. Kevin Nee from the States pushed it out 12 times. Over to Paul and Colin. So Darren Sadler for Yorkshire and for England. I like the way Darren Sadler handles himself in these sort of situations. He doesn't think of himself as a small man, but he really just goes go for it every time. This is a tremendous performance so far. Easily racking up the lifts. Seven, eight, no problem at all. No, not at all. Starting to burn out though, and your triceps are such small muscles. You hit the wall very quickly. 12 reps. I'm not sure you'll get another one here. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, dear me. That was one too far for Darren Sadler, but again, the young man has got good points. 13 repetitions. not sure about the sort of form in this particular test for Mark Felix. We saw how strong he was in the deadlift, but this could be a tough one for him. Just getting a bit of advice there from a former world strongest man. Well, if we were to go on past form, Felix isn't brilliant at this event. He's got great shoulder strength, great leg strength, but somehow the two just don't coordinate. He looks uncomfortable. He, he, already he looks uncomfortable, doesn't he? Well, I'll tell you what. The other thing I'm a bit concerned about is, is that bar coming down low enough just under his chin? He's been given the reps, but he's struggling already, and we're only on to number four. 
Remember that uh, Darren Sadler achieved uh, 13 reps. That is a disappointing performance by Mark Felix. And I think that's a bit of a wry smile on the face of Yarek Dimmick. He must really fancy his chances now. He's second overall. What an opportunity to get some points over Felix. Well, I think the problem for Felix is he's gone so low in terms of the number of repetitions. If Yarek Dimmick was to win this, Dimmick is right back at the top of the leaderboard. Oh, dear me. This is one powerful human being we've got here. Tremendous. The whole body working in unison. It's a pleasure to see. Look at that legs exploding up. He's going for broke now. Darren Sadler's lead of 13 is gone. Yarek Dimmick has won this one. And that spells trouble for Mark Felix and everybody else. A brilliant, brilliant performance by Yarek Dimmick. And just one event to go. We have a real fight on our hands now, Paul. We certainly have, and Mark Felix knows it. Yarek Dimmick there made it look so, so easy. That was no surprise, you winning the Viking Press, being one of the best in the world always. But were you surprised that Mark did perform so bad? Yes, yes, it's true. He surprised me. But uh, I want to tell something different. Uh, the people don't know why I'm the best on this event. Because I have the best teacher and the uh, event's name, your name, Viking Press. Because you're a Viking and you, you teach me. I'm embarrassed now, but thank you anyway. Good luck with the last event. Thank you very much. You have to see this. Well, time to break the Yarek Sven love in there. Dimek wins with 15 reps and Felix will be disappointed, managing just four. Dimek is now on top by seven and a half points from Felix. The real fight, though, is now on for third between Sadler, Knee and Peterson, all of them gunning for the final qualifying position. It's the final event and it's the power stairs. These three weights, 225 kilos, 250 kilos and 280 kilos have to be lifted up these sets of stairs to the top. A very brutal event to finish on. Too brutal for you, I'm afraid, Lawrence. You're pulling out. Why? Yeah, unfortunately, I hurt myself on the first event today. And um, as the day's gone on, it's just got worse and worse. And now I'm in sixth position, come top six, which is good for me. But um, I can't place any higher, so I'm just going to do the sensible thing and try and rest up and hopefully go to World's Strongest Man later in the year. Hopefully, indeed. Go rest up. Thank you. Now, Sven, can anyone beat Yarek at this event? I don't think so. We are in Poland and we're actually in Jarek's hometown, Malbrook, standing here with the biggest Gothic castle in Europe in the background. He is king of the castle. I think he is, but the others will give it their best. There are the stairs. That is the target for all of our athletes to get these weights up a height. Stefan Solvi Peterson is the first to go. Big body weight of 155 kilos. So here we go. The first weight, 225 kilos. Makes it look quite easy. And actually, this guy's got long levers, and I think that's going to help him. Well, in the old days, 225 kilos, 500 pounds was a very impressive deadlift. Now these guys have taken up a set of stairs like it's nothing. They'll slow down a little bit though on this second weight. Fatigue will kick in and, well, I think probably Felix and Dimmick stand a good chance of finishing all three, but I think it might be a task too far for the others. Well, we'll find out here. Peterson already looking exhausted. Yeah, fatigue has really set in pretty quickly here before he even starts the third weight. 280 kilograms, we're above 600 pounds now. It's beginning to struggle a wee bit. Now, can he make it over the last two steps? This, an event, of course, which will decide who our three qualifiers are going to be for the World's Strongest Man final. And Peterson there just struggling. He's got to get that weight all the way on, and the clock will stop any minute now. There it is, 68.94 seconds for Iceland's Strongest Man. 
Well, Darren Sadler and Kevin Nee know what they need now. They have to beat that time by the Icelander if they're going to come in third position and go to World's Strongest Man as a guaranteed qualifier. Well, certainly Peterson had the disadvantage, if you like, of going on his own. And that couldn't have been easy. But Sadler, here's the camera. It'd be a great psychological advantage to get to the top first with that first weight. Oh, and knees just ahead of him, though. They're both almost absolutely on track with Peterson in terms of time. This is going to be so tight. But remember, Peterson he has the advantage of being so much taller than these two. Look at there. Sadler struggling with that weight between his legs. Yeah, Kevin Nee has maintained that slight lead he had after the first weight. So 225 and 250, now the big one, 280 kilos. And you can see exactly what uh, Colin Price was talking about there. It really is a disadvantage that Darren has in this event, being a little bit shorter. They have just over 10 seconds to get up those last couple of steps here if they're going to beat Peterson. Well, Darren Sadler... He's finished on 10 steps with those first two weights in 48.78. And Kevin Nee's time yet to be confirmed, but we see he's outside of the time set by Peterson. And that time by the Icelander is looking better and better. Kevin Nee screaming there to try and find out what sort of time he got. 71.11. He'll be very disappointed. So Mark Felix now, a chance for him, but he's up against Yarek Dimmock. This is a great head-to-head -to, -head to finish off this competition with. Well, I think the smart money would be on Dimmock, despite Felix having the stronger back. We've already seen that in the deadlift, and he's a taller man as well, Felix, but look at this. He's so explosive, Dimmock. Well, he's like a jack-in-the-box going up those stairs, that's for sure. And I'm surprised how much distance he's put between himself and Mark Felix in just the, uh, the course of lifting that first weight on top. Jarek Dimmick now is on the last weight, and this is looking very good for the Polish champion. I think it's going to be a Polish win. It's going to be a hometown win. He's got it. Absolutely superb. That is a terrifically fast time, 41.02. Stays on top of the podium, urging on Mark Felix. He's going to finish strongly here as well. Good time for Felix in the end, 56.64. And these two guys certainly have put distance between themselves and the rest. What a way to finish. Yarek Dimmock, the home man. 15 steps, 41.02. That is well ahead of Mark Felix or Peterson. There is the situation after the six events. Our three qualifiers for World's Strongest Man, Jarek Dimmock, Mark Felix and Peterson of Iceland. Tremendous performance and the crowd loved the fact that their man won. So Poland has been kind to two veterans of World's Strongest Man, Jarek Dimmock and Mark Felix. We now know our final list of athletes who will be coming here to Malta to do battle for the crown of World's Strongest Man. And of course all eyes will be on Marius Pudzianowski, the reigning champion, who if fit will be aiming for an historic sixth title. So join us here in the heart of the Mediterranean for what is promising to be one of the toughest competitions in the 32 years history of World's Strongest Man. Until then, goodbye.